Greetings viewers, Tyler from Berlin Man Gaming here, back with another green screen effect review. Sorry for the quality not being as good and the camera work. I moved, unfortunately my camera got knocked from the spot Luigi and I set it up and the green screen got a little moved. So I'm trying to get things back in order. I'm sitting on something. I took the chair here <laughs> to uh, give you my review. I know the game took me quite a while to beat, I do apologize. But I've been having fun to stream it. And it so yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3. Was it worth the wait? Yes and no. I'm gonna go by categories here. First of all, I'm gonna go with graphics. I I think the game looks so great. I'm sure if I had the 4K TV and the PS PS4 Pro, it would look even better and all that a little more detail I could see and all that but just even on my normal HD TV and with my normal PS4 it looked great loved the visual and the art style they've, they've taken it up a notch that's good I'm liking that uh, the music and sound my voice acting it was all good I, I, I don't have anything that stands out or to say to say anything oh this was really amazing or anything I don't have any standout moments so I do apologize on that so I can't really call too many references for that uh, but the one that wasn't a shocker to me that was kind of a disappointment the story yeah I'm not gonna really spoil too much I'm gonna give you there are slight spoilers in here but if you watched along as I've been playing or watching the parts along YouTube that have been uploaded, you know my kind of thoughts and opinions at different points in time. Uh, some of the story's okay. Some of it's really, really bad. Uh, having a certain plot line for two characters, I'm not going to name the characters or what the plot line is, because it's clear the writers didn't care and were like, Hey, we're just going to set this up, do, okay, you're six hours from future from the last time you saw them, put a two seconds in. Okay, it's been another five hours. Yeah, well, maybe now nah, we won't put a scene. Another three hours after that. Okay, we'll put a scene. No. And then they, they do very little and then pay it off at the ending, or not pay it off, I should say, bring it back up at the ending, and it's like, yep, to buy another game. Make another game. Uh, no, you guys have had how many games now? I'm sorry. That's not my fault you couldn't wrap it up. You, you, you got a little too greedy and a little too, this is, I want to make more, I want to make more. How about just let it end and you can start with new characters and start some new ideas. That's my opinion. Uh, another one that is divisive for me, but I still enjoyed was the combat combat itself like your basic attacks fine you get your magic magic i used it a little more than i don't normally use in the other games but the thing they added with magic is the grand magic what you could do after a certain point in olympus coliseum i believe don't quote me uh, olympus Sorry, it's the world, not the Coliseum, because you don't go to Coliseum. But in that world, I believe it is, you get access to Grand Magic. What Grand Magic allows you to do is if you get the little combo thing up, you can cast magic at a higher level. So in, in the case of, like, you could do Faragara or Faragza, or I can't remember the exact name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. I am a Final Fantasy fan and all that, but... I don't know why I'm butchering it today. But it was so much fun and it made me cast more magic to get that bonus. Because that didn't, when you use great magic, doesn't deplete your MP meter. The attraction thing, it was neat and fun, but it's clearly in there. This is Disney. We, we want people to come to our theme parks. It feels that way. Sorry, it does, in my opinion. Stuff I 
the abilities were fun and I like having the more than I don't have to swap out Donald or Goofy for whatever character that's in the world and sometimes there's two characters per world it's nice to have multiple people and because of that you can have more heart they have more heartless on screen also because there are more powerful consoles which I did enjoy and I like the team attacks for the most part some are better than others but I like the even the little small ones you get like with Donald it's like unison fire where you shoot out a bunch of fireworks together that home out very cool and very fun so combat I found very fun. The summons I used a bit. I used the Simba summon mostly. The aerial one's not bad, but overall fun. That. Things I hate that they they were missing is drive forms. Love them in Kingdom Hearts 2. Being able to use two keyblades at once, and then the thing is they serve purposes. You got the glide ability, better glide abilities, better jump abilities. I can't remember all the different abilities you got, but you got different forms of them and if you every time you go into dry forms there's a chance you go into what is called anti-sora where you have no keyblade and you're all shadowed out like you're heartless just attack them it was it was cool and fun yeah i like i i do like that they gave the keyblade transformations it kind of does help and like I think pretty much everyone but the Kingdom Key, if I'm not mistaken, has at least two transformation. I haven't got the ultimate weapon yet, but that was fun. I did enjoy using that. It made me feel really powerful. And it's fun for clearing out tons and tons of Heartless and taking care of bosses. Uh, the world itself, I thought they were okay and but they felt shoehorned in. A few worlds I was surprised we didn't see. I'm surprised we didn't go to Agrabah just because it's been in pretty much... It's been in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. I would have thought they would have went back there. I, would, I was surprised no Radiant Garden slash Hollow Bastion. I'm surprised none of the Final Fantasy characters. They just dropped that. It seemed like a lot of Final Fantasy stuff they just dropped out. Why? It's been in like so many, pretty much every game but this, even the, the quote on the other games that don't have like, have the weird numbers. I don't get this. This is just, I, I don't know. I think Square, they were just trying to, we got to end this. Let's, if we put too much in here and we got to spend more time explaining shit and doing shit. No, let's just try to hunker down here. Overall, I think the game is good. I got it at the reduced price because I did a pre-order bonus years ago. So here in Canada, it would have been $79.99 plus your tax, which is like $90. I got mine for like 50 bucks. So it's, I'm not, but I don't want to go my value of what I got the game at for my review price. I'm going to base it off of what the, if you were to go buy it today and now the game's been out for like two months now I only recommend this if you're a hardcore Kingdom Hearts player the combat is fun and you, you may get some enjoyment out of some of the story moments it's stuff like that and you want to see the ending if you're this close anyway to play pretty much all the games like I have then yeah you might as well but if you're not a Kingdom Hearts player a, don't start with this. B, get away from this series because you're going to waste too much of your time, in my opinion. <laughs> like, maybe play the first one. That's what I could recommend. I'd only recommend this for the hardcore Kingdom Hearts fans. If you're more of a casual fan, I'd say skip it, watch the cutscenes on YouTube, and then make the decision for yourself. Or I'd only own it unless you have to. But I'd like to let you know your comment, your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Did you play the game? Are you gonna get the game? What did you think? Well, this has been this is Tyler from Brother Man Gaming. Signing off. Thanks.